Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be making this interactive smoke effect using a combination of fields and arrays. I'm going to start by going to this blank scene. I'm going to add in a 3D field. I'm going to use the simple 3D fields uh, system because that's going to come in with a couple nodes already connected for me. Next thing I'll do is add in a light just so I can see what's going on. I'll put it up here. We should get a reasonably good idea of what this system is going to look like. Now for this effect, I don't need to use the temperature simulation. So I'm going to go to my field route and just turn that off. And you can see now the field doesn't go anywhere. It just stays at the uh, origin. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my proof emitter and I want this to emit in like a wide um, area that's going to fill up my screen. So uh, I'll just go to the uh, primitive type, make it a box, give it a five by three uh, size, which is not quite, but close enough to 16.9. Now we can see when the smoke is emit, it comes in with a little initial vorticity, which is fine. But as this smoke is pushed around by the forces, we can really heavily impact our performance if the smoke ends up filling all the cells. So I'm gonna add in a bounding box just to limit the area the smoke can grow into. Uh, I'll also use that five by three ratio and just pull it up a little bit, just so we're fully encapsulating the area this um, emitter can generate within. And lastly, I'm gonna add in a camera so I know what my scene is gonna look like from my camera's perspective. Just move it a little bit above and then rotate it to face downwards. So we look at it from here. Uh, just zoom out so that we're fully filling in. That should work fine. So now we've got some smoke emitting into our field system. Now let's make it a little more interesting, add some uh, movement to it. So I'm gonna move my primitive emitter up here. I'm just gonna add in a curl noise. So this node is gonna push around and add some velocities to my field system. And you can see here, once I enable it, it's doing quite a bit of that. Uh, so I don't want it to be quite this aggressive. So I'm gonna pull down the noise size quite a lot. Uh, just so we're getting this like sort of more general motion here. Um, but when the noise size gets lower, the actual amount that it pushes around is um, sort of reduced as well. So I'm just going to increase the curl noise amount by quite a lot. So yeah, now we can see we're getting these long, these really big motions within our field system. But it's all looking visually really strong. So I'm going to take my primitive emitter uh, and change its density. Right now it's max, so it's always trying to get to that max amount of density within the scene. I'm going to set it to add and lower the density a little bit. And we'll see that's going to thin out the smoke a little bit, which is nice. I'm also going to go to my field route and just increase the density dissipation. So this is going to increase how quickly the smoke fades over time. So we can see it's fading a lot quicker. There's not quite as much density as there was before. And then lastly, I'm gonna increase the velocity dissipation to one as well, which is going to, just going to slow down how quickly the um, velocities accumulate. So you can see here, we now have this sort of little area of smoke that's pushing up and rising up and just sort of being pushed around almost like waves, which looks really great. And the last thing I'm going to do while I'm in here is just increase the vorticity to two, the large vorticity to two. So the vorticity options here basically control how much the field is going to, in effect, how much detail is in the field. So as the forces are pushed together and start colliding, how much of that is going to create these sort of broken up shapes like we can see here. So um, two seems to give me just a little bit more of those broken up shapes uh, in the larger uh, vortices. 
So we've got a nice looking effect here. I think it's time to start making this interactive. And I'm going to do this pretty uh, simply. I'm just going to add in a mouse point array. So this node, uh, like any array node, but creates lots of copies of the child of the child nodes that are put underneath it, which can then be um, used to create uh, really interesting effects. Now. Um, by default, it's going to create a one by one box. I want that to be set on the right plane, so it's going to match my camera view and the bounds that I set up earlier. I'm going to set the bounds to match my emitter. Cool, so we can see here through my camera as I click around the, um, actually, when I click around with my mouse point array active, we can see my mouse point here. Now, the last thing I need to do is just offset this mouse point so it's sitting on top of my field rather than within it. So just take the position Y and just increase that a little bit there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add something that's going to impart a force into the field, this uh, field system. So I'll add in a, a velocity effector. Now you see when I click in now, we get an instant like infinite force being pushed in and that's because my force effector isn't using any fall offs. So I'm just gonna take the force effector, enable fall offs and just reduce that radius quite a bit, something like three. So now you can see as I click in, we're getting these forces being injected into the field simulation. At the moment it's all being um, injected upwards. So the field system is sort of pushing in this direction. I actually want it to inject downwards into the system. So I'll just take my velocity effector, rotate it downwards. And now you can see as I move around, we're sort of cutting into that field system and pushing down into the base of it. And this looks fine, but the issue we're seeing here is that what we really want is for the force to sort of impact into a ground plane and then be pushed outwards. At the moment, the force is sort of just phasing through the bottom uh, of this bounding box as if there was no uh, floor here. So I can add in a primitive collider or primitive collision. Connect that to my root. It'll start as a base circle. Um, what I'm looking for is a plane. Orient it to match the uh, 3D primitive, uh, the emitter we've got already. Put down just below the plane. There, and now we can see when we click in, uh, actually it's a little bit subtle here. You can sort of see the motion coming out this like subtle um sort of ring being pushed outwards uh so i think i'm going to need to increase the velocity a bit yeah that's a lot stronger now we can see all those like extra shapes being generated as the velocities sort of move into each other and that's pretty much it for this finished effect uh for making it look prettier i'm just going to add in another light at the point of my mouse array. Just set it to Omni and you can see now when I move around, you can see the shadows updating as well, which is really, really cool. Um, I'll just take down the brightness on that a little bit. And the other thing I really like doing is adding in a cloud material. So fields can use, um, have their own materials called, uh, called field materials. And these allow you to make really deep control of the way the field is rendered. So here I'm going to change the scattering color to just a little bit blue and then pull down the scattering amount. So how much the light sort of scatters as it goes through the field system. And you can get this really neat uh, effect here of the field and this subtle tint of blue to it, which again, is all lit up by my emitter as well, and by my um, effector, I mean. 
You can also use this with Tuio or any of the other array nodes. Uh, here I've got it being animated with a transform array. So I don't have to click around and show what's going on. It's just a couple of animated nulls being mo moving around and uh, impacting uh, forces, imparting forces into the field system. But you could go a lot further than this. For now, I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.